Okay, hello. If you can hear me, I suggest we slowly start. I know colleagues, they will come and fill the room, but we have to start. We have to make use of our time because the interpreters, of course, they need to go at some stage. So if you could just try and find some space, we will start the session. Thank you very much for coming at this uh, session. Ah. Okay, so we're not, do I continue or do I wait for the live session? Okay, oh, there. Now we are starting being live. I'm not going to repeat what I said. I said welcome to everybody. So we are going to start our session. Hello to everyone. We are going to start our meeting. It's been live streamed, as you can see. You can see me all over the place, which is okay. <laughs> now, uh, we are going to uh, start, as you know, with some changes in the program. You must have received the uh, final agenda because we had some last minute change. Uh, we are going to have uh, uh, Daniel Kuchko, who is the vice president of Brittany responsible for maritime affairs, who is going to replace his president. He's going to speak to us in a moment about what has happened. Obviously, uh, Case Logan, that you all know, the president of uh, CPMI, he will also make his introductory uh, speech. And then uh, we are going to start with our roundtable session, where uh, I'm going to moderate, and we are having Catherine Sabou, who is coming to replace Pierre, Merci beaucoup d'être venu comme ça <laughs> au pied levé, comme on dit en, en bon français. <laughs> um, the commissioner will come uh, online, so we will see him online, but he will participate in the debate. So it's not going to be a video, but it's going to be an online presence. And uh, we are going to have Maria Anteles Elorza Zubiria, who is Marianne, and uh, the General Secretary for Foreign Affairs of the Basque government. So this is our first uh, session. So people joining us, please uh, take place at the back uh, of, the, of the room. I would like to invite then the Vice President of uh, Brittany Region to come and make the introduction uh, for us. Thank you, sir. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Secrétaire Générale. Monsieur le Président, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, with all your various titles and, and jobs, thank you and welcome to Brest, which is a very important re, um, city for the region of Brittany. Um, always has been turned towards the sea, the city of the sea, and over the last few years it has a tendency in Brittany to look more towards Paris. We realize today that perhaps we need to look again to revisit our maritime involvement, which is essential both for ecological reasons but also for economic reasons. I'd like to present the excuses of Luc Girard, who unfortunately uh, caught uh, COVID last night and is unable to attend uh, today. It's interesting to see that this COVID-19 obliges us uh, to take political decisions from one day to the next, and to attempt to anticipate the one day for two days later. It's difficult, but we need to anticipate for the day after tomorrow and after that uh, on the climate conditions. And over the last three days, we've been working on this question. 
assez anxiogène. Hein, quand on not, uh, anxiety introducing, but uh, protecting resources, and questions of mobility, of energy, and all of that is complex. But today we're in a situation uh, where we uh, say to ourselves, we have a certain number of solutions. And the summit, in this summit, what's been important is to listen to people have solutions. And uh, they're not only you know, announcers of catastrophes, which will probably happen, but uh, it, we will be stronger. It, it won't be get better if we don't take care of it. Alors, la question des régions maritimes est évidemment extrêmement importante. So the question of maritime regions is a very important one. We are advocates of regions, of maritime regions. We, in it's in the, we know how important local decisions are, and ports are, and decide with our sailors and fishermen, with our infrastructures, and with our ports. And these are investments that we can group together to achieve on the European level. And this morning, I had the great uh, pleasure of accompanying Mrs. Minister of the Sea uh, from Galicia, and we had uh, concerns that were shared and also convergences to attempt to work with the European Commission on a certain number of decision-making processes or decisions that could be made in the name of ecology and protection of the resource, obviously, and the quality of life in our territories and the, our sailors. That of our sailors. I'd like to thank the commissioner, uh, and we know he came uh, to Brittany. We received him here in Brittany, and he knows that today we we can count on territories to count on the maritime regions to propose solutions. We have a certain number of difficulties uh, admi of ad ad administrative and technical nature. Uh, we will not forget that there are things that are pretty incredible uh, in, in in terms of fishing and fishermen where. They, they catch species that they have to put back in the water, and, and normally they should unload them, which gives rise to a lot of concerns, uh, even in measuring resources. But we will new, never do anything against the, our, our, our sailors or fishermen or against the population. So we need to take advantage of our experiences, and, um, and sailors are the, the, the knowledgeable people about this. And once they tell us very clearly that they are for the preservation of resources because they're shared the good, we can trust them to find the real solutions that will be even better uh, as solutions when they've gotten a bit further away from the technocrats. So we've moved forward uh, together on these questions. It's for the planet. These solutions exist. And these uh, solutions cannot be weighed down by measures that are too centralized from, you know, too top down. And uh, we have a way of looking at Europe through the regions and through the maritime regions in particular is an asset for Europe. It's an asset for our territories. And thank you for this initiative in Brest because obviously we do indeed to work uh, closely together to find a certain number of responses that our fellow citizens are expecting of us. And if those responses don't come, these features will be much more radical that will take over. And that would be too bad, because uh, ra ra these, uh, you know, radical reactions are often the result of despair. And I think that here, with the regional committee and the coastline, regional coastline committee, we really have solutions. And it's interesting. Uh, these solutions are interesting there because what's true in Galicia is, uh, is uh, maybe handled differently than in the Finisterre, but there are solutions to be found that are universal and singular, unique. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for this introductory remark. I'm uh, looking at the, uh, the chair, what the situation is with the chair of Brittany, but these things happen. We have to deal with it. Thank you for coming and to take over. And you were certainly the, the person, the most, uh, the most apt person to do so because you're in charge of, of the Brittany region, maritime affairs. Now, some, now, this was created in Brittany, you know, um, and it's been several years ago that it was created in the 70s. There were 14 regions that joined together in Brittany to say that we need to know. Uh, we have to find our uh, points in common. We have priorities, we have difficulties, and we can do things together. That was the idea. And it was at that time 
that this uh, structure was created, law in, in, in Brittany, uh, to face up to the shared uh, interrogations about the coastal regions and maritime regions that we, uh, that we have, that we are, that everybody knows that. We're all members. Okay. I'm going to give the floor now for the introductory speech of our president, Mr. Case Logan, who is, uh, of course, uh, the uh, person, the most important <laughs> in CPMR. He's going to give his introductory speech. Uh, he's also the uh, governor, the vice governor of the uh, uh, province of North Holland. The floor is yours, my dear president. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eleni. And uh, thanks to the regional government of uh, Brittany and to our close CPMR friend Loic, who is suffering from COVID, and I think we are in thoughts with him, and I will be wish him very well. Ladies and gentlemen, over 15 months ago, I was elected as CPMR president in an online meeting, and since then, I have only chaired CPMR meetings with faces on screens, sometimes frozen, <laughs> and occasionally looking at an abandoned chair. And this is why I cannot express how happy I am to meet people in the flesh and blood uh, again at the conference table. And therefore, I thank the French presidency of the EU and the Brittany region for making the One Ocean Summit in a particular uh, this forum possible. And I thank you all distinguished guests here um, for making the trip to Brest, a city that I learned to know many years ago when I was serving in the Dutch Navy, and I had always a very great and nice time in the city of Brest. And this time, it was no different. Ladies and gentlemen, maritime regions obviously have a special feel to what is called the Blue Continent. Our bond, our bond with the oceans and sea goes beyond the dimension of trade, growth, and jobs. Oceans and sea for us represent a source of energy and resources. The Blue Continent, however, is not vital only for maritime regions, but for all mankind. Over the past two days, we had the opportunity to participate in events related to particular to the contribution that seas and ocean make to the econ economy and the food supply. We took the opportunity to call on the EU, national governments, and the private sector to join forces to help and protect re re and restore the Blue Continent. We also discussed the dark side of oceans and seas. And yesterday, I recep represented the CPMR in the event organized by the Ocean and Climate Platform dealing with sea level rise and the huge threat that it represents to the coastal regions. This afternoon, we are going to talk about maritime policy, their objectives and the main results. And not for the first time, and certainly not for the last time, we will talk about the substantial role regions can play and should play when it comes to designing and implementing maritime policy. Because it's the region and local level that is directly confronted with the consequences of maritime policy, be it in fishery or marine, marine renewable energy policy or climate adaptation policy, just to name a few. In the coming weeks, member states will finalize the program for the European Maritime fishery and aquaculture fund and submit them to the European Commission. And this is an important moment for many CPMR regions, as the new fund is expected to support a green and climate transition in the fishery and aquaculture sector. The fund should promote the development of the sustainable blue economy in coastal communities. And I'm not telling you anything new when I say that, many that the new fund may come with teething tro troubles. Many of them will be experienced for the first time at the ro regional and local level. And therefore, I propose that CPMR members join forces to identify and replicate best practices and, if necessary, devise solutions to problems arisen from the implementation of the new fund. In line with this, I propose, and I'm now looking in particular at the European Commissioner and the recently re-elect chairman of the Fishery Committee, that we present and debate the, the thus acquired knowledge on the implementation of the EMFAF annually in the Fishery Committee or in the Syriaca Intergroup and starting in 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that our lifestyle is damaging the seas and oceans. And to put the end of this, 
an integrated or, if you prefer, a holistic approach is required. We need an overall vision focused on the ocean and the seas as such, but also on a strong link that connects the sea to coastal communities and all related factors, addressing environmental issues, investing in research and innovation, boosting economic development and employment, and shaping the future blue skills. However, in order to lead to greater social, economic and environmental sustainability, this overall vision will have to be based on a multi-level governance approach. All key sh stakeholders at EU, national, regional and local level must be involved. In this policy design and implementation phases of the maritime policy. In this regard, and allow me to cite the example of the Greek government, which last year launched the initiative to establish a specific integrated maritime policy for coastal and islands regions. I call on other member states to follow this great example of the Greek government, and I challenge the EU institutions to launch a political debate on the re regionalization of the European maritime policy. Dear friends, thank you for your attention. There is work, work to do, a lot of work to do, and I wish you a fruitful meeting and I surrender you now in the capable hands of our Secretary General. <laughs> so it's back to you, Eleni. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear President. So a lot of issues have been already announced, of course, in the opening speech of our President. A lot of issues about the uh, European Maritime Fund, uh, suggestions that have been uh, put forward to the European Parliament for actually having an annual evaluation of how this is work is being done, uh, also for the CRIPRA working group. And we're going to immediately have, of course, uh, give the floor to one uh, very eminent member of the, uh, of the CRIPRA intergroup. Remember, the uh, European uh, Parliament intergroup was set up now several years in different mandates, third mandate now. CPMR has been serving this uh, intergroup with a lot of interest from our side because we really think it's very important as maritime regions to be able to, to liaise, work, with the European Parliament together in a cross-sectoral and cross-political man manner. Because as you know, the European Parliament works in different thematic committees. And we wanted to make sure that the maritime activities are addressed in an horizontal way. So the intergroup is really getting together different stakeholders, member states, and European Parliament MEPs from across the board, from different uh, commissions, different sectoral commissions, to address these maritime issues. I think it's, it's very important that we do that. And it's been uh, quite successful so far. So hopefully we could have some good results, some good discussion in our session now, in our roundtable session, although we're not in roundtable sitting format anyway. Um, it's the, the subject is about enhancing the EU maritime policies and to focus on the multi-level governance and the sea basing approach. So for us, multi-level governance is a must, and it's really a way to work together to promote maritime activities across the board. Because it's not possible that this could happen at one level, at the European or at the member state or at the regional and local alone. A cooperation of all of these stakeholders, uh, decision makers together, would really give the good results. So that's the multi-level uh, governance for us at the smaller level, like a neighborhood level, to the larger level, to the macro regional level. So all of that is important for these policies to really take shape and form. Okay, without any further ado, I'm going to invite Catherine Chabot, who is the member of the European Parliament and vice chair of the CRICA intergroup I mentioned before. She is responsible for precisely climate and governance. So <laughs> Catherine, it's your subject. Merci. Thank you. Secretary General. General Secretary. Uh, vrai I'm que sorry. Je vais en I'm going to speak in French. Je, je I'm replacing Claire, as you say, uh, I'm improvising. In the five minutes, uh, we have another meeting which is starting. It's interesting to know that. It's with uh, the shadow reporter in the legislative tests that we're working on currently on about um, ETS, the um, trading, um, carbon trading, and alternative uh, carbon for alternatives to carbon for maritime transport. We would like to defend the idea of a, a, an ocean fund, but I'm absolutely enchanted to be here with you. 
uh, this afternoon. I'd like to greet you and to share. I don't know how you feel, but after what happened this morning, I'm in, I have a lot of energy. And I think that Brittany must be extremely dynamic. And, and, uh, and, uh, and I think the Dutch as well, and all of the territories that you represent here today in continental Europe, but everywhere uh, uh, around the oceans of the planet, in Stéphane Bijou, who, who carries the extra peripheral areas in the European Parliament. To, I think we're living through extraordinary times with the issues linked to the sea, and that's why I took this European mandate. And for a long time, we've tried to push certain topics forward. And when there's a, a very strong uh, take up on the part of uh, politic, politicians and, and all of the countries that are present, I think this is really, uh, it really lends a certain dynamic to the whole process. And we have an agenda for 2022, which is absolutely essential for our uh, maritime and peripheral regions. And we've understood clearly that this is the kickoff. But all of this agenda involves you, in, in implicates you. And the big, they're big issues because I'm not going to repeat it, but um, you are really in the, in the front seats um, about pollution and whatever the, the other issues are. But nonetheless, the sea is a wonderful source of wealth for your territory so long as it is preserved. So there are many double um, issues at stake. So these are the messages that were spoken about this morning, and these messages are for you, uh, both talking about the problem of plastics, the problem of developing marine protected areas, which is a real issue. I know they're being developed in the extra peripheral areas and the reduction of uh, CO2 emissions by transport, or marine maritime transport. And the European Union, uh, they want to have uh, ports that are more exemplary. Carbon neutrality that we need to be targeting. Um, and all of the potential inherent in uh, renewable energies. For example, I'm sure that Stefan's going to speak to this one, but the insular territories. I think that's an important uh, issue to develop uh, energy mixes for them. I think that we are really on a very uh, strong thrust, and I'd like to invite you to take advantage of this impetus. Um, and to, uh, and, uh, and I guess I'm going to do that. And I think that you know, I'd like to share with you a vision that I have about this bond between uh, uh, land and sea. And we need to change the paradigm and not on, no longer look at just developing the blue economy just for the sake of developing it, you know, fishing and transport and renewables. No, we have to ask ourselves how the sea can irrigate our land-based territories. The sea is not just, uh, you know, it doesn't only belong to the sailors or maritime uh, enterprises. Tourism, indeed, produces half of the sales figures uh, derived from the coastline. So I think really we need to, uh, coastline projects have to be territorial projects and that's really part and parcel of the French national strategy for the sea and territories and the coastlines that I spoke about when I was working on the Ministerial of the Sea and, I, and we committed to these topics. And I'd like to finish by sharing with you over the last two days of proceedings of the One Ocean Summit. I, I, I announced two calls for action. The first had to do with governance, the worldwide governance of the ocean. Four years ago, I called so the ocean should be uh, declared as a common good of, um, of humanity. It's not the responsibility of uh, only nations, but also cities and, and citizens. It is my responsibility. And I think this whole notion of a shared uh, ocean incarnates is incarnate in two pro proposals. First of all, the creation of an IPCC of the ocean that is proposed by scientists and the creation, we can't really, we don't want to call it a cop of the ocean, but uh, a place where we would try to be consistent about maritime projects. And we can inspire this work on because ultimately, it, it, it could be a kind of an ocean uh, 
a climate a conference. And the call to action that I launched here in the workshop on Europe uh, spoke about that. It's addressed to European institutions and to all of the Europeans. It's to improve, if we want, you know, to accelerate the maritime policy of the European Union. We need to better integrate our maritime policies, and that means we need to we need a vice chair in charge of maritime issues on the European Commission. We need a project team uh, based on the ocean. We knew on the European Parliament we need a, a, an ocean commission or committee or maybe a Syrica intergroup to move forward, to move this intergroup towards a committee, to make an ocean committee out of it. I think that's something we need to think about. We need to coordinate all of the institutions and the agencies in Europe that work in territories. And I invite you to commit to following that dynamic movement in Brest and the commitments from Brest. And I'd like to wish you happy sailing and have a great meeting. Oh, clearly, you're passionate about the subject that came across loudly and clearly. Please forgive me. I, I, I absolutely hate to have to leave you like this, but um, I had a prior engagement. I have to go attend a discussion about the Ocean Fund. We're in touch permanently with you, Catherine. So this is just a... Uh, so long. We'll see you soon. The critical issue is coordination, and uh, that's why we've been working together for so long. I suggested yesterday that in Lisbon for the UN conference, we should arrive in formation. We should coordinate a meeting with the Council, the Parliament, and, uh, the European Commission, and the CPMR, I think we should uh, present a united front, attend as a group. Excellent. That's that's a wonderful prospect. So we have promises, we have projects, joint projects. We are in constant contact with the European Parliament. They're very mindful of our concerns. They do listen to us. And indeed, we could organize such a meeting. The maritime regions approach maritime affairs in a, a, a multi-dimensional way. We don't address the environment separately and governance separately, plastic pollution separately. No, we address everything concurrently in an integrated fashion. So the commissioner should be with us online. I don't want to keep I'm waiting. Is, is he uh, online? I see the time. Can I am. Ah, here you are. Have you, have you followed everything we said so far? Absolutely. Ah, you are a big star then. Okay, we give you the floor. We had a very nice discussion with uh, Katrin just uh, earlier on. Uh, you yeah. probably followed the whole thing, and you must have followed also the, uh, the summit which is really launching a, a huge power over the, uh, the blue, the blue power, I would say. Huh? So if you want to take the floor and tell us a little bit what is the perspective from the European Commission. Thank you for coming. Absolutely, absolutely. It's an excellent forum. I'm very sorry that I, I was a bit sick and I couldn't join, but uh, President von der Leyen, I think she delivered an excellent speech and very inspiring uh, today. But also, you know, our speakers now in, in in our discussion, in our meeting, and Catherine Chabot, she is always wonderful with her love to ocean, which is undeniable. And when she, you know, apologized that she has to leave us early, I think everyone knows that when we speak about ocean, Catherine Chabot is always with us. And I'm very thankful that, 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 that she, you know, uh, spends some time. But uh, let me go ahead with my speech. Uh, so, of course, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very glad to be joining uh, this forum today as it touches. Uh, uh, upon one of the key aspects of our new sustainable blue economy ambition, the participation of, of regional stakeholders in, in sound governance through a sea basin approach. 
And when it comes to, to blue economy uh, policy in Europe, our focus has shifted dramatically. We have moved from blue growth to a sustainable blue economy. And this means we no longer celebrate growth for the sake of growth, regardless of its environmental and social dimension. And we no longer accept growth when it leads to pollution, climate change, or, or biodiversity loss. Instead, we want to develop a blue economy that contributes to the solutions and helps restore the balance on our planet. And this is, uh, this is where the opportunities uh, lie for long-term sustainable growth in the sector. Our new approach asks from every blue sector to adopt sustainable business models, to develop clean products and technologies, and to reduce the cumul uh, cumulative effects of its activities on the maritime environment. But uh, most importantly, this new approach asks us uh, to work together. And, and, and the shift to create a sustainable blue economy will only work if all players and sectors work in the same direction. Member states, regions, businesses, large and small scientific community, local groups, and, and the general public. Everyone will have to make serious and sustained efforts. And cooperation needs to become more strategic and horizontal. It has to go beyond national, beyond regional, and across levels of governance and sectors of activities. And for this, we have a key tool, which is Maritime Spatial Plan. We have already started managing our space rationally and fairly. Our rules on this are unique in the world. Now, we are creating a new era, uh, a, a new uh, C user forum, uh, the Blue Forum, for all the stakeholders in fishery shipping, in tourism and renewable energy to come together and develop synergies in, in support of the decarbonization process. And we have a key player, the coastal regions. Uh, the CPMR actively contributed to the preparation of our new policy, highlighting how coastal regions are at the heart of the EU investment towards a sustainable blue economy. And, and they can apply custom-made policies, they can uh, mobilize their industry and, and, and academia, and they can assist organizations applying for public funding for their projects. Talking about funding, many recovery and resilience facility plans of, of coastal states already include substantial investments into the sustainable blue economy, amounting to some 10.5 billion euros. Furthermore, coastal regions are the engine of multi-level governance and, and stakeholders' involvement, exactly what we need to turn our new sustainable approach into reality. And in this context, uh, let me mention, of course, the Brittany region specifically uh, for wanting to develop its own integrated maritime and coastal regional strategy. I truly hope that you can lead the way. We may need a facilitator, and that is what the CPMR can do. Uh, support the regions and connect the efforts across the EU sea basins. And I think the, 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 the previous two speakers who gave their introductory speeches uh, from, you know, uh, Brittany region uh, and, and then the, 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 the president, uh, they actually highlighted that very well. So the Commission is promoting the sea basin specific cooperation in all EU waters with excellent results. And I'll just give you the example of the Atlantic since we are in Brest. We have had an uh, Atlantic strategy for 10 years, which even before its update in 2020 had generated 1,200 new maritime projects and nearly 6 billion euro of investments coming from the EU, the European Investment Bank, nat national, regional and private sources. So now we have an update action plan for like France, Ireland, Portugal, and Spain, and allowing to involve regions even more closely. In complement, smart specialization strategies represent a key uh, opportunity not only uh, to prioritize regional research and innovation investments in, in, in blue economy sectors, but also to promote interregional partnerships and uh, blue economy value chains across borders. And accordingly, we are setting up the smart specialization thematic platform for sustainable blue economy that will support regions and stakeholders of the different sea basins to tap into new opportunities. The sea basin uh, dimension is also relevant in the context of the lighthouses to be activated for mission Restore Our Ocean and Waters by 2030. The lighthouses 
will demonstrate how to restore the health of uh, our ocean and what and through technological innovation, social innovation, multi-level governance. It is no coincidence that they are organized per basin. One for the Atlantic Arctic coast, uh, coasts, one for the Mediterranean Sea, one for the Baltic North Sea, and one for the Nuke River. The first calls for the lighthouses are already open. Equally important at sea basin level is the work on ocean literacy. The EU for Ocean Coalition has already held a number of regional events that raise public awareness and promote youth activism on, uh, mar uh, on marine protection. So, to conclude, dear colleagues, the post-pandemic recovery of the blue economy sector is a collective challenge that needs a collective response. And regions can and must take the lead in the shift to sustainability. And next year, European Maritime Days will take place in Brest. It will be a good opportunity to take stock of the implementation of our sustainable approach and to design future steps. My thanks again to the CPMR for promoting maritime regional cooperation in all the sea basins of Europe and for maintaining a constant dialogue with us and with the European Parliament. And I highly appreciate your involvement in all uh, our relevant policies and would like to, to welcome you in the working group on offshore renewables of the Clean Energy Industrial Forum so that the regional voice is present. I also want to congratulate, uh, of course, the French Presidency of the European Union and the Britain region for holding uh, the, 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 uh, the summit. Uh, 2022 seems, seems to be the year when the ocean finally uh, gets the attention it deserves. So let's hope that this ocean year makes a difference if we work together and I trust uh, that we finally have a chance and it will make a difference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. And uh, of course, as you say, thank you also. Okay, hello? Yes, better. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, Commissioner, for your, for your speech. It was really all-inclusive. It gave us uh, a lot of the insights. Uh, and it complements a little bit what we heard uh, so far uh, in the morning meeting uh, for this particular uh, summit. I hope the ocean will be really the center of the attention. And I also hope that the ocean will bring together all the stakeholders, including the regions. Because you very rightly said, and I am a believer, that we absolutely have to include all layers of governance, including the regional level, for the simple region. But if, if we want to make maritime investments, a lot of the structural funds are par can be partly uh, you know, deployed for uh, investments in the maritime area. So it's a, it's a financial means that the regions uh, have and they manage themselves. Some regions and countries, they have total competence in some of the activities related to, to the maritime uh, action. So it's very uh, necessary to make sure that all stakeholders, public, private, but in particular the regions are really part of the whole uh, operation for actually working together at all levels and at the sea basin level. And as you know, CPMR is uh, very much the sea basin level per excellence, if I may say, because we are really working uh, in that particular way from the beginning. Uh, with the six geographical commissions, we work on sea basins. And we try to really orchestrate projects and uh, activities and policy direction in all the sea basin in across the country uh, issues because it's more than one uh, EU countries really that they are working around these sea basins and also not only European countries, it's Europeans and neighbors. So we actually are very, very active in all these aspects of work, which brings me to the uh, last uh, but not least uh, uh, speaker, uh, Marianne. Uh, she is the secretary, the, uh, the um, general secretary for foreign affairs of the Basque government, and she will speak to us about governance. Okay. Monsieur le vice president de la Bretagne. Mr. Vice President, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, Chairwoman, good afternoon, and uh, I'd like to thank you for having been so kind as to invite me to attend this forum. It's, it's a tremendous pleasure for me. I'm speaking on behalf of the Basque government and also in my capacity as president of the Atlantic Arc Commission, which brings together 
CC AA's and regions sharing almost 2,500 kilometers of Atlantic coastline. We're intimately linked to the sea. It is part of the DNA of each of the members of the Atlantic Arc of each CPMR member region and of this beautiful region that has welcomed this conference. For centuries, the ocean has been our window on the world, our source of livelihood. It has forged our history, our character, and way of life. The sea and the ocean are part of our past and present, and we want it to be part of our future, which is precisely why we are here. We will soon conclude three days of debates on how to deal with the pollution and the effects of global warming or overexploitation that threaten our oceans. The challenge is absolutely overwhelming given the very worrying figures on ocean pollution. But now is not the time for alarmism, but for action. Today, we've heard calls for action and for joining forces to protect the ocean. So I want to tell you immediately that the members of the Atlantic Arc want to be part of the solution. We're aware that for our Atlantic territories, there can be no green transition without a blue transition. The blue economy is fully able to support the energy and climate transition. Thanks to it, a whole world of opportunities, progress, and quality employment are opening up to us in various fields such as aquaculture, marine renewable energies, the blue bioeconomy, biotechnology, desalination, and many others. If the global blue economy could be compared to a national economy, it would be the seventh largest in the world. So this is quite considerable. And this is lies at the heart of our activity within the Atlantic Arc Committee, where we exchange knowledge, promote projects between regions, and collaborate through different working groups on innovation, fisheries, or the recently created one on ocean pollution. Let me mention two emblematic projects of the Atlantic Arc Commission. Clean Atlantic is its name. It's designed to protect biodiversity by improving capacities for monitoring, prevention, and disposal of marine waste. Another emblematic project, MATES, which seeks to develop a skills strategy aimed at aligning the supply of training with the demand for current and future skills in the shipbuilding and marine renewable energy sectors. The Basque government that I represent here, uh, which is uh, fully active in all these areas, also uh, shoulders its own responsibility and has its own commitments in this area. By 2023, we plan to set up a technological pole of reference for the development of the blue economy. We want to create an entrepreneurial innovation community and promote emblematic projects on topics such as high value added food ingredients of marine origin, the efficiency of the fishing sector, and the search for alternatives to minimize the effects of fishing on the marine environment. We have a long history of support for marine renewable energies and our technology center AZTI is involved in many European research and development projects aimed at reducing the effects of plastic and microplastic waste in the sea. In the coming weeks, the Basque government will sign the global commitment for a new plastics economy. And for our part, we are committed to encouraging other members of the Atlantic Arc to join this dynamic. To conclude, I would like to highlight three ideas. The first is that it is urgent that we take action. We must recover the health of our waters, seas, and oceans here and now. Secondly, we are convinced that by facing up to the dangers that threaten our oceans, we will see a whole range of new opportunities open up, as is the case with the Green Pact and the Blue Economy for the Atlantic Coast. And one thing is certain, 
The issue can only be tackled in, in a collaborative manner and requires effective multilateral governance so that each level of government can contribute to its capabilities, anticipating, making decisions, promoting initiatives, and investing. Interregional cooperation programs such as Interreg Atlantic Area and the Atlantic Maritime Strategy are essential tools for cooperation. Nevertheless, we need an institutional framework with a higher political commitment. This framework, as the Atlantic Arc has already stated, is the macro region. We want to move towards a macro regional strategy that would integrate our marine dimension while taking up the challenges that our territories face. I would like to take advantage of the presence of the most senior French diplomat and Commissioner Sinkevicius to ask for their support. We would be pleased if under the French presidency of the Council, the Commission could be mandated to give birth to the Atlantic macro region. In view of the complexity and the multiple facets of the challenges we face, we need solid institutional frameworks, a broader perspective, a governance model in which each level of government has meaningful participation, and we need to enjoy stable relations with our Atlantic neighbors and island territories on both sides of the ocean. The Basque government and our partners in the Atlantic Arc Commission will continue to work to place the territories of the Atlantic seaboard at the heart of the EU's priorities and to lay the foundations for the prosperity of future generations. Thank you very kindly for your attention. Thank you very much. So that presentation uh, was devoted to the Atlantic Arc. The Basque Country currently chairs the Atlantic Arc Commission, and the Atlantic Arc Commission has uh, put forward the uh, initiative of creating a macro territory, retain our maritime approach, but uh, operate on a macro regional level. This would be a macro regional, thus a larger, a broader strategy would be encompass a larger territory. Have you got questions for our speakers? Have you got proposals to make? Because if you have, this would be the perfect time to take the floor. I see you are all very shy, or you're fully convinced by uh, the speaker's statements. Well, I would like to say that throughout today's session, I'm referring to uh, the high-level session. There was a tremendous amount of energy uh, displayed, and that energy is at our service. Yet, I felt a lack of emphasis on the regions. The regions uh, had not been, didn't make themselves heard. We could have shown off what it is that is being done, say, in the Basque Country. Mr. Commissioner, sir, if you're still with us, I'm going to follow up on what Catherine said uh, and say that we should travel to Lisbon united as a concerted, in a concerted fashion. We need to band together and the CPMR regions have much to contribute. So, Mr. Commissioner, sir, I hope you see no objections to that proposal that Catherine has made that we should travel to Lisbon together jointly as a group and uh, make our 
contribution in that fashion. Mr. Commissioner, would you like to take the floor? Would you like to respond? Because we can't see you, so. Oh, the commissioner is no longer with us. Okay, then. Now, is there anyone who would, is eager to take the floor? No, you're awfully quiet, but you do seem to be listening. Because, yes, it has been a, a <laughs> an exhausting day so far. So I think everybody's uh, ready for our second session. Uh, welcome, everybody. So my name is uh, Nick Brooks. I'm executive director at the CPMR. Um, and uh, we are going to have a roundtable discussion on a theme which is very dear to the members of the CPMR, and that is financing sustainable blue economy uh, in EU peripheral maritime regions. Uh, we have uh, nine uh, different panelists uh, with us today, eight uh, regional speakers and a member of the European Parliament who's already been introduced, uh, Stéphane Bijou. Um, and all panelists were asked uh, the same questions, which is uh, quite simply, how is sustainable blue economy finance in your region? Uh, because of course it means different things in different regions. Um, do you have any concrete proposals uh, for the EU institutions in terms of financing? Um, and, uh, and of course we asked you to refer, if possible, to EU funding. And the reason why we did that is simply because, as you know, 2022 is going to be a critical year when it comes to launching uh, investments from, from the EU. The Commissioner spoke about the uh, Recovery and Resilience Facility and the 10.5 billion euros which will be invested on uh, sustainable blue economy. There's also the uh, cohesion policy which will be deployed uh, this year and not to mention the a European Maritime uh, Fisheries um, Fund as well. So um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first uh, panelist. You, by the way, this is, uh, you're free to either speak from your chair or you can speak uh, uh, in the middle. It's really up to you. Um, so I'll introduce uh, our first speaker. So um, Valle Miguel Santiago, uh, who is CPMO Vice President for Transport and Regional Minister for Murcia. So you have the floor. Now? Okay. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Primero saludar al presidente de la CPRM. Hello, everyone. First, I'd like to thank the chair of the CPR, the representative of the Brittany region, commissioner. It's a great a pleasure to be at this uh, panel discussion. I'm happy to be here with you today. And as it was said earlier, by the person in charge. We have all of the possibilities and the accessibility to the CPMR in Brest. 
in the extreme west of the continental Europe area in the ports. And for us, it's, this is something that is key for the sustainable development of a peripheral maritime mixed area. This is the case of Brest with the importance and the interest uh, uh, of the ports as fundamental elements. The first thing we see about ports is that they have an essential role to play for connectivity of ports. They are a bridge, in fact, between seas and oceans. But even more than that, they contribute to the blue economy and thus to the deployment of renewable energies. Ports are confronted with a significant challenge, and the first of which is to contribute to the fight against climate change and to adapt and take uh, the effects into account. But even more than that, we have the challenge of being linked to the land-based networks and the challenge to use them to reindustrialize, as well as the challenge to decontaminate the port areas. Now, if the Commission of the European Union has proposed in its uh, communication on the blue economy, a whole series of actions targeting actions in order to help decarbonization and, and decontamination, protection of energy for maritime transport and ports. So these are as many challenges uh, of great importance and that are necessary that we need to commit to to make the appropriate and significant investments in this respect. And the sources of funding that we have in the European Union in the various programs, such as the inter European in Interconnection Mechanism, uh, Confeder, the Fund for uh, Maritime Fisheries, and the Horizon, Horizon Europe program. And really, these are all very important. These are major investments. I'll give you a few examples of that, uh, of these investments that will be made at Cartagena in the Mercia area. This is a port that was considered to be an important uh, contributor uh, to the Mediterranean area. It, it's important because we had to uh, take environmental measures that have been responsible uh, with a single objective, to transform the port of Cartagena into a real reference of a sustainable port. Well, can, in that initiative uh, for sustainable ports, we're envisaging more than 130 million euros to fight against climate change and a whole series of actions uh, targeting to reduce and compensate almost 1 million tons of CO2. And even more than that, in the Mercia region, we initiated a specific uh, funding line for uh, producing a, a, a sustainable port, for the development of our ports, and that they remain sustainable. And so truly, in this objective for the port of Caterina, we have an objective which is essential for the development both of the city and of the region, including uh, as well as the whole country. And the objective is that our efforts need to be effective. They need to be sustainable. And our efforts need, above all, to work on the situation we're in, to reduce pollution, um, in agreement with the objectives uh, for development defined by the European Union. And I would also like to underline various fundamentals about the blue economy for peripheral regions in maritime areas. We're talking here about conserving 
on preserving the coastal environment. And how can we do that? Well, we can do it, first of all, by promoting best practices. This is something that's of great importance. And we have to adapt as well uh, uh, measures to, to protect them and us. And to do that, we need to adapt in the in, in areas where we have natural resources and adapt the economy and natural and the infrastructures. That is why we're going to be contributing to help in the adaptation of solutions that would be natural, uh, which are based on nature. And um, using various system uh, of uh, saltwater barriers and, and uh, humid areas, uh, salt marshes, and various uh, algae plantations and mangrove, which make it possible to fight against the climate change. So we have this major plan which is really for a space of very high ecological value. We're renaturalizing the space to create an environment with a double objective, that it be appreciated and that the society can profit from it. And can it be also a protection and protective element of that uh, maritime area? So this is totally in line with the Union, European Union projects, the directive on the um, ecological uh, transition and the, the green passport and the, the sustainable architecture, and which will make it possible to improve the situation, which, as you know, has worsened in that region, and which has suffered a, a whole series of, of, um, of damaging events in the past years. So we are trying here to uh, uh, improve the situation, at least in, so that the damage does not continue, we have to try to save what can be saved and to have a real impact on human life. And the objectives of that blue economy it leads us to a commitment that's important above all is to work together, united. And, the, and I hope we can do three proposals. The first proposal I have is that we need to find an agreement amongst ourselves where we create a, 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 a set of good practices, a collection of good practices, and as well as we, we can see how we can move forward in ethical initiatives such that we can ultimately we can determine the funding we need to uh, conclude the project. I suggest as well that we uh, commit to certain actions such that ports, instead of being perceived by society as a polluting infrastructure, uh, that they become instead the, the, ent the, the entry point to a sustainable, uh, um, joyful use of the uh, coastal areas so that people can realize that our ports are really an essential hinging point uh, to the blue economy and that we really do need to be able to follow this roadmap and to take this turning, because this will mean that the ecological objective is, is, is there, and very much there, and is arriving in our ports. What I heard this, after what I heard this morning in the plenary session, where we spoke about the various initiatives that were proposed on various levels, we spoke about a proverb that I liked very much. What my mouth says, my arms here are embraced by my arms. 
So we need to initiate our arms to make sure they're listening to what the mouth says. Many thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, Minister, for, for pointing out some of the critical issues that uh, actually we've been thank seeing. Thank you for, a very long for time. this presentation and for uh, identifying this problem that we've been thinking about, the fact that the European Commission is talking about the greening of, uh, and decarbonation of ports and uh, the transformation you're talking about in the various regions and the role of the regions and your own region, as you know. You referred to the cost involved and the fact that we need a, 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 a more important uh, uh, funding. I'd like to pass the floor over to the next speaker. If you could remove your mask as you speak. And secondly, I have the unpleasant You can do that, you're a speaker. Although we are extremely happy that so many of you travel for, for this very workshop. Uh, Even though many of you have traveled to come to this workshop. We're a bit, a bit late, so perhaps I'm going to request that you respect the time that's given to you of five minutes each. Thank you very much. Thank you, Valerie, for your very interesting presentation. Vice Chair, Vice President for Transport and Regional Minister of Mercia uh, Government. Dear Commissioner, dear members. Oh, sorry, in Crete. A commissioner, members of Parliament, Mr. Dear, dear Chair, it's a great and dear colleagues. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me to meet you today, and physically as well, in this workshop on the coastal regions in the context of this summit. And as a representative of Crete, which is an insular region, I have four points. Even though Crete and other regions have no maritime strategy that is specific, this being said, we have priorities, specific priorities and pillar, pillars since we are a coastal territory belonging those specific priorities and uh, related with uh, fisheries and uh, aquaculture, with coastal maritime and cruise and tourism, ports, protection of coastal environmental and others. Our regional priorities have been addressed with the perspective of sustainability in the concept of the European Green Deal, in the concept of the integrated maritime policy and the new approach for a sustainable blue economy, also of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The second point is about the blue economy finance in the case of Crete, region of Crete. As there is no one unique competent authority for maritime affairs at national level, related service and national policies are taken under several ministries, such as shipping and insular policies, such as environmental and energy, such as agriculture, food, such as tourism. In our renewed regional smart specialization strategy, we have appointed now a pillar dedicated to blue growth. As uh, this is a bottom-up consultation procedure, with the involvement of our stakeholders, we hope that concrete relevant actions will be prioritized in order to be able to deliver concrete innovation blue projects. The European Maritime Fishery and Aquaculture Fund is a program implemented at national level However, our uh, regional service are dealing with local users and stakeholders and development agencies to prioritize activities relevant to calls to local needs. Finally, moreover, we are trying to introduce intervention related with blue economy sectors into our new operational programs according to the good lines of the European Commission. The third point is uh, some specific investment needs. 
Nevertheless, the needs of business oriented new investment remains in high importance and uh, of our interest in the region. We believe uh, that we should focus on increasing the carrying capacity of the private sector and competent public service of startup business and upgrade the skills and knowledge of person personal involvement. As we hosted a strong research and academia ecosystem, marine biotechnology is a very significant and promising sector. Besides favorable conditions, Arout Grid offers a great opportunity of a marine renewable energies with circularity is a tool addressing a more sustainable use of marine resources. Finally, I will give some examples of key action. Crete is al already very activated in interregional cooperation, successfully implemented projects such as the Mistral, which is the Mediterranean Innovation Strategy for transnational activity of cluster and networks of the Blue Growth, and uh, the Blue Phasma, uh, empowering innovation capacities of SMEs, maritime cluster and networks in Mediterranean islands and coastal areas to support blue circular economic growth in fish and aquaculture. The project of SOC Limbak are uh, responsible for the effects of climatic change to the blue economy and many others. We have funded projects for alternative uh, tourism, such as the diving parks, and we support marine research infrastructure by actively participating to EMEA Beres, the European Marine Biological Research Center activities in cooperation with the HCMR. Finally, my message. My message is that we strongly believe that the regions need to cooperate building on their needs, interests, and dynamic activities. The framework of a sea basin and macro-regional cooperation is an ideal approach to face with uh, together, together the challenge and the opportunities towards a sustainable blue economy for our society and coastal communities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Vice President. Uh, regions need to cooperate. I think your message is uh, very, very clear. And I'm also glad that you're actually referring to uh, what uh, Catherine Chabot said uh, a little bit earlier when she referred to the need for more coordination uh, between the different act actors involved in, the, in, in maritime uh, affairs within the institutions. I think you said very clearly that at the regional level, uh, you know, regions coordinate the very strands of the sustainable blue economy from shipping, marine renewables, uh, tourism, et cetera. So thanks, thanks a lot for that, uh, uh, George, for, um, for your uh, uh, contribution. Uh, je vais um, changer de langue, déjà. <laughs> I'm going to switch uh, to another language. And I'd like to hand over to Mrs. Huguette Bello, who is chair of the Reunion Island region. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and representatives of the European Parliament, dear colleagues, people in charge of the executive of the CRPM, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for handing me the floor. I'm here as the chair of the Reunion Island region. It's a French department. It's a European region. It's a ultra peripheral. It's in the southwest of the Indian Ocean, and thus presenting many specific uh, risks. Reunion is not only a coastal region and a maritime region, as, as everyone in this room, but it's also a tropical island with their own our own questions in this uh, geographical area. And it's a, an insular uh, environment. It's in the southwest of the Indian Ocean between the independent states, uh, accompanied by another ultra peripheral area, Mayotte, and overseas territories of the European Union in the French Antarctica. Now, for these reasons, the problems of the blue economy is unsustainable. I have a specific uh, echo in Reunion Island. It's 2.6 percent of the uh, of, uh, and involves some 10,000 um, employments. 
So this is a good dynamic because the, employ the, the jobs increase 4.5% per year or three times faster than regional uh, jobs. Since the blue economy covers a, very, a, a wide variety of activities, the sources of funding are also varied. There's the government and uh, local communities, and there's also the European Union. Almost all of the European funds uh, finance the blue economy, and that's the case of the European uh, Forum for, uh, for the FEDER Development uh, Fund. And, the, and for the major ports, it's the case of the social fund the, for training. It's the case of the interreg program for co-development, regional co-development. And lastly, it's the case of the European Fund for Maritime Affairs and Fishing, and which is the, dedicated, the fund dedicated to fishing and aquaculture. And we need to uh, say thank you for, your, for that, participating in the development of our territories. This being said, I would like to regret the inconsistency of both internal and external policies in our region. The fishing, industrial fishing fleets from Europe are capturing in third party states, and this is the intervention, and this is against the payment of a fee at the same time. Basing this on the state of, uh, of resources in Europe, which has nothing to do with our country, the European Commission limits uh, the local fishing in this way, despite a principal uh, 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 agreement going back 200 years, they still have not authorized the renewal of uh, fishing uh, vessels more than 12 meters, which are an absolute necessity. This renewal is indispensable for a better productivity. And to, and to reduce our carbon footprint and to have a more uh, uh, better safety for the, for the smaller fishermen. They're waiting for the notification of this agreement, our fishermen. And our patience has its limits. We need to put an end to this inconsistent common policy on fishing and to enable the development of that activity, vital activity in the overseas department, as we spoke this morning. More globally, Reunion Island wishes to call to the attention the importance of this in the blue economy, in agriculture, renewable energy, biotechnology, blue technology. This is, we already have a lot of research and experimental activities in this area. Now in the geographical area, the exclusive area in France, which is big as the Mediterranean Sea, it is located marine protected areas and the objective of protection of 30% of the ocean by is is not a utopia the will to protect is not incompatible with the requirement to better know our marine resources such as uh, rare lands the president of the republic announced a 2 billion euro funding in over 5 years shared between um, in the framework of blue france 2030 to explore, uh, uh, there, and there are 95% still remaining to be explored in the deep in deep sea water. The southwest of the Indian Ocean comprises a, a, a zone of predilection to implement these actions of, of research. I'd like to underline as well to what extent overseas departments can play a key role in international action of France and the European Un Union. Thus, France recognized as a, a power in the Indian Ocean, in the, we can, it is a force of balance faced with uh, increasing intention between the U.S. and China. This zone, ha we know, has become essential by the importance of the maritime routes with 40% of the uh, world's wealth in this area. In France and Europe, must m apply uh, in these effects thanks to France and the overseas territories. The European Union is the first world power for exclusive economic areas. They need to have a real maritime policy that is worldwide, like other big countries such as Canada, which don't have uh, they have less advantages. These supreme words have been said a long time ago about the maritime dimension of France. The acts have not followed the words still. 
we hear this complaint too often, but it has all of its meaning. The sea is the future of the earth. Developing the blue economy, fighting climate, uh, global warming, protecting the oceans and, exp and using them sustainably, the, res the resources of the ocean, and promoting and integrating coastal areas are everyone's business. Communities, governments, union or European Union must all act together. And it is a matter of better associating the maritime regions to this exalting work, which is a commitment to the future as to us we are ready. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for this very committed speech. I think the messages were very clear. You talk about the importance of the blue economy in the reunion. You talked about the funds that uh, were already being uh, used. And you got across a few method uh, messages for better world policy for the sea. I think those messages are very clear. At least I understand them. Thank you very much for being with us here. I would like to uh, introduce our next speaker, um, uh, Mrs. Rosa Quintana Carballo, who is Regional Minister for the Government of Galicia. So you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Nicolas, for giving me the floor. Authorities, participants, and all of those who follow us online, the President of the Region of Brittany, the friends are on the table, ladies and gentlemen. Authorities, participants, and all those who are following us online, I'm very pleased to be here today among so many familiar faces once again in person at the first CPMR event after two years of pandemic. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the members of the CPMR for all the efforts made during these months to make this event possible and to thank the region of Brittany for welcoming us all in a place like this and at a time like the present within the framework of the One Ocean Summit. Now, when it comes to Galicia, the subject of the blue economy requires that uh, we address the uh, or report on the experiences we've been developing. And in this sense, we must talk about the local action groups of fishing and the Port of Vigo, which have made this initiative a standard. It should be noted that the Port of Vigo as an entity has the necessary means and support to be able to manage at this level. Thanks to the mobilization of all these funds, the Port of Vigo has developed up to 51 different projects, 33 of which are in the execution phase and 47 actions of which 13 have already been completed and 25 are in progress. These activities, all in part, are eligible for or, in fact, already have received funds based, whether specific to the C, such as the F EMP, but also others such as the regional funds, ERDF or social ESF, as well as support with financial instruments of the European Investment Bank or the Blue Invest Fund. On the other hand, in Galicia, as you all know, thanks to the exchange of experiences kindly uh, provided by Farnet, the local action groups of the fishing sector, GALP, offer the possibility of a greater development of the blue economy from a point of view of diversification and complementation of the main activity, which is fishing, promoting employment and inclusion. In Galicia, there are eight GALPs, and they act as collaborating entities of the Conselleria do Mar, being the development agents for the implementation of the participatory local development strategies and agents in the management of aid, in addition to being a catalyst for private investment. Since 2016 and until 2021 in Galicia, thanks to the GALP, 631 projects have been developed and financed with more than 38 million of public investment and 48 million of private investments. In November, and within the framework of the Future of Europe conference, Galicia hosted one of the many events held, specifically the one entitled All the Opportunities of the Sea, Moving Forward in the Blue Economy, a forum for citizen participation that was a great success in terms of dissemination and which will foreseeably be reflected in the next report of the European Parliament on the subject, as the blue economy is one of the concerns of our citizens. Thus, from Galicia, where the maritime fishing activities 
related to 64 of the 81 that make up the entire economy of the region. We are working on the formulation of the Galician strategy for the blue economy to guide, support, and enhance the actions that have been carried out and that are an option for the future of our region in line with the UN and the European Union. With this initiative from the Junta de Galicia and in an orderly manner, legal protection and organizational coverage will be given to all sectors and industries that are directly supported in the marine environment, such as maritime transport, fishing, or aquaculture, or those that being subject to land or conducted on land always look to the sea, such as ports, shipyards, naval infrastructures, or coastal tourism. Therefore, I'd like to take this opportunity to address our commissioner, Mr. Sinkevicius, who has had the opportunity to visit Galicia and has been able to see its great maritime wealth, to ask him what actions will be carried out by his two departments, fisheries and environment, to put an end to the conflicting discourses uh, pertaining to uh, opposite interests and thus achieve harmony in the discourse on the uses of maritime areas. We believe that at times it is the administration itself which, with its discourse, seems to place greater relevance on some sectors with respect to others, with the negative burden that this entails for the latter. I would like to end my speech uh, by emphasizing the importance of financing all these actions. In addition to the complexity of bringing all the sectors together in harmony, there are the difficulties of having the necessary resources to make this a reality and robust and easy to manage financing is absolutely necessary, accessible, and able to provide certainty to the actors. Uh, Mr. Carlos came as chairman of the U European Parliament's Committee on Fisheries has kindly requested to tell us how the regions can have a voice and support to undertake these regions that go beyond not only our regions, but also our borders. In order to address this particular issue and the options that it raises from Galicia in collaboration with the CPMR, we have planned to hold a seminar foreseeably in Brussels where we hope to be able to count on the participation of DG Mar as we have had the opportunity to announce to the Director General, Mrs. Charlina Picheva, last year during another meeting of the CPMR in which we hope to be able to shed light on the potential financing options thanks also to an analysis that we carried out in relation to these possible sources of economic aid. Finally, I'd like to take the opportunity to invite all those present to Galicia because at the end of May, we hope to be able to hold a major event to promote the role of the regions in the framework of the report on, on the review of the common fisheries policies that the European Commission has planned for the second half of 2022. We hope that the Commissioner, together with all the authorities present today, will make time in their agendas and have the opportunity to accompany these reasons and give the necessary support to a sector such as fisheries, which has worked so hard and which we have so much to thank in the best way we can, for which we have so much to thank, legislating to make its task increasingly simple, more sustainable, and why not more attractive and avant-garde. Thank you very much for your kind attention. To the CPMO, which is the issue of the means. So, of course, it's good to set ambitions, to set high targets, high goals, and when it comes to green, uh, the Green Deal itself, but again, you have to have the means for it. And uh, we would expect, uh, I, I suppose, the EU to, to, to help us a little bit more than what they are uh, doing so at the moment. Um, so, uh, thanks a lot for raising that point, which I think is shared by a lot of our member regions. Uh, um, our next speaker comes from far away, and I understood you drove. Uh, from, from Paris uh, just uh, a minute ago, so you must be quite tired. Very happy to have you uh, with us, uh, Mr. Armao. Uh, you're Vice President of Sicily Region, and if I could ask uh, the remain remaining speakers to really try and keep it down to five minutes. I know you have a speech, so I'm counting on you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Dear President, uh, dear Secretary, colleagues and dear participants. I am honored to participate in this meeting today representing the Sicilian government as well the CPMR Inter-Mediterranean Commission under presidency of the Sicilian region president Nello Musumeci. The EU blue economy will help to deliver both the European recovery and the European Green Deal. The objective is strong, sustainable resilient and climate neutral model blue economy. The Mediterranean is the ground zero of the global climate crisis 
that affects 500 million people in three continents. Mediterranean region specific vulnerability to climate change often require adequate cooperation and funding. While it is also important to recall the EU commitment to reduce its greenhouse gas emission by 55% by 2030. As this effort is laudable, a better interrelational cross the issues of human development, good governance and rule of law, resilience, prosperity and digital transition, peace and security, migration and mobility, and the green transition through climate resilience, energy and environment is nonetheless needed. Beside the approach of the different socio-economic vision of the Mediterranean basin is unavoidable. On this, in order for the European neighborhood policy to fulfill its role in supporting the implementation of sustainable blue economy while contributing to move the Mediterranean towards a different socio-economic paradigm for more sustainable globally. Regarding funding, it is there important for it to be sectoral and one hand but also transversal in the other hand to deal with the way of our all economic ecosystem and interlinked. In this occasion from CPMR Inter-Mediterranean Commission, we emphasize the role of the local and regional authorities network. Network such a Mediterranean Cooperation Alliance should be fully acknowledged by the European Mediterranean Institution and stakeholders and their capacities to support decentralization and integration of the streaming of policies and funds at various governance level throughout the Mediterranean. Local and regional authority and their networks can play a, a key role in the search of greater coordination among the already existing transnational frameworks and funds potentially under a micro-regional perspective. Funding mechanism of the blue economy should be based on a multi-level governance. This is, uh, for, for us, the, the aim of the relation between region, state, and the EU, U European Union. Albeit complex, multi-level governments ensure that public policies of Mediterranean, European, and national scales answer the territorial needs reflect through the voice, management, and decision of local and regional authorities on, in, in the one hand. On the other hand, still through the, the action of the latter multi-level governments, so lower sound landing and public policies and funds on ground. In this context, CPMR, the Intermediate Mediterranean Commission, remind that local and regional authorities should play a prominent role in the new multi-annual financial framework, 2021-2027, as we as in the recovery instrument and next generation EU. The development of maritime economy is considered a central asset of Sicilian government, which has included it among the political priority of the regional economic planning document, 2022-2024, starting from the essential of the role of research and innovation and can and must become one of the key drivers of the Sicilian economy to compete in international market. Sicily is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea, has about 1,500 kilometers of coastline and almost 100 landings of different sizes and futures. The fishing fleet consists of 3,000 boats, equal to 22 0.6% of total in Italy. And a, a big part of Italy, a big region of Italy, is not only for the territorial dimension, but as well for the economic dimension. The economic activities related to the sea resources are mainly located along the southern and the western coast, as well in the eastern one from Catania to Syracuse and along the coast of the province of Palermo. This is my city. This place represents the pole in which the economy of the sea has a very relevant weight on the local employment, with the shares of employees exceeding 20% of total Portofalo 
Mazzini in Santa Clara, Lampedusa, and many others in which the shares are between 5 and 20% of total employment. The opportunities are enormous and the potential of blue economy can give significant results in terms of employment, economic development, and environmental protection provide that fundamental gaps of the interoperability, availability, and integrity of data and economic, social, and environmental level are overcome. It is also necessary to define the, govern the governance of basic regulation in the blue economy and to identify the financial instrument to support it. In the interest of my insular region, I at, the, at the end of this week, it is urgent and necessary to establish the use of economy, economic instruments of the stimulate to initiate the transition through the consolidation of EU financial instruments, including the March annual plan for 2021-2026, in order to promote the exchange of best practice and fund pilot projects, build the roster of success studies related to the blue economy sector at the local and regional le level. The Sicilian government does not only intend to affirm the idea of Sicily as a cultural and digital platform in the Mediterranean, but above all, it intends to be, be a pivot of European development in the island region. For this reason, we are working to make the blue economy as a development factor of the Sicilian economy. Lastly, the CPMR, Intermediate Commission, we, uh, we insist in the necessity of to strengthen the efforts of awareness rising and capacity building with national, regional, and local government across the Mediterranean and about the importance to incentivize inter enterprises and people to understand their part and play for a sustainable and resilient Mediterranean. Likewise, institutions should help the youth and workers to build capacity and upgrade their skills in coherence with the current context of socioeconomic recovery and climate ecological necessity. The sharing of good practice in terms of funding and governance and their mainstreaming over territories and policies should be reinforced with the different programs and funds available from the next years, programming period and beyond. Therefore, in the conviction that the blue economy is the future, we have to look at, we ask for the support of EU, increasing funds and fiscal opportunities as well, in order to make companies engage in the blue economy, more competitive, or international markets, in particular for the insular regions like us. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Armao, for giving us uh, sis, uh, the pr perspective from region, uh, uh, Sicily region, I'll say right. Um, and also to remind everybody that you hosted the last um, General Assembly of the CPMR in the the physical General Assembly, which was uh, something that we very much miss, and, and I think a, f a few of the speakers mentioned that earlier, so thanks a lot. Um, my next speaker is um, uh, the Minister of Culture and Environment for French Polynesia. Very many thanks for being with us. Merci d'être avec, avec nous. Uh, Thank you for joining us. I'm going to try to pronounce your name. I, I've been practicing. <laughs> I've been practicing. Ere Moana, Mama, Tuaya, Hutapu. I think I think uh, I got everything in there. Minister of Culture and Environment for, the, for French Polynesia. Thank you. My first name means love of the ocean, so uh, I'm in the right meeting. The oceans are at the heart of globalization. It has been stated repeatedly over the last three days. The oceans are uh, the thoroughfares for uh, the conveyance of uh, wealth and goods. And they're also thoroughfares for communication through uh, the uh, pathways laid out by our underwater cables and fiber networks. The potential of the oceans is an answer to the critical challenges that uh, humanity faces. 
The oceans are food storehouses uh, that can be withdrawn through fishing, and they also hold tremendous resources with great potential for medicine and health. There are no doubt molecules in the sea that will help us cure cancer and Alzheimer's, as is currently thought. We have a specific status and don't have access to European funding in French Polynesia, except for the new partnership, the PPOM partnership for the period 2021-2027, with the disappearance of uh, the ERTF and, and its integration into the European Union. The intervention sector of uh, this new funding is focused on green and blue growth and the development of sustainable food systems. And then there's a program called Protege, that's a regional Oceanian program for the territorial management, sustainable management of ecosystems. The idea is to develop sustainably uh, and uh, help reverse climate change. Our gigantic oceanic territory in Polynesia is as vast as Europe and uh, merits closer attention. Pol French Polynesia uh, accounts for 45 percent of the French e exclusive economic zone. And for over 20 years now, we've been protecting all the uh, mammal species, whales, turtles, manta rays, and sharks. We were the first country in the world to um, ban shark fishing. This year, we are celebrating the 20 years of our marine sanctuary. And since 2018, this 5 million square meter European economic, exclusive economic zone is uh, protected in a very specific manner. Our management plan has 33 measures. I'm going to focus on three. The first is the community management of coastal fishing. The French president made some announcements at the plenary, and it's based on our traditional Ruawi system. It's collective or community management of our fishing grounds and species because management plans uh, don't work. Imported management plans don't work in our territory. So we have gone back to our roots and uh, have brought in our communities for contributions. We also have another program for the acquisition of knowledge, the purpose being to better understand the aquatic environment and better plan our protection and sustainable management programs, either to protect species or areas. So we've got a huge strategy for acquisition of knowledge of our 509 subaquatic worlds, uh, mountains. And we have a more active participation in scientific regional programs devoted to uh, benthic resources and the impact of climate change. And the third program is the protection of our 15,000 square kilometers of coral reef ecosystems. 118 ounces, 5 million square meters, square kilometers, and 20% of the, the Earth's atolls and 15,000 kilometers of coral reefs. This is the first bulwark against uh, tidal waves and uh, is indeed a, a source of wealth. There are it's teeming with species that we have yet to uh, name and discover. There are the whole family of coral that remain to be better understood. So we have decided to undertake to protect and uh, sustainably manage these fragile coral ecosystems. The first step should come to fruition at the end of the year and will be followed by a more comprehensive protection program of all the Polynesian coral reefs. And if I have one plea to make to the European Union, it would be that uh, you know, as these three programs are so important to Polynesia, uh, so are they important to Europe and the entire planet. Then 
the Pacific Ocean is the new center of gravity of the world economy, it is said, and in the new geostrategic context of oceans, France, through the One Ocean Summit, has just refocused its attention on the role of the uh, ultramarine territories that account for 97 percent of its oceanic territory. And we believe that uh, the experience of the last two days should uh, guide us uh, in the future. The funding of European fisheries must be reconsidered. That funding has helped European fishing fleets, but have resulted in uh, damage for our populations with these huge netting vessels collecting our fish. This has become a problem. And I would like to urge better co cooperation with the CPMR. We need to do a more extensive job of sharing experiences and best practices because in many cases we face the same difficulties when it comes to drinking water, water and the management of waste. Thank you very kindly for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Minister, sir, for having uh, reported on the situation in your territory and your specific challenges. Thank you very much for uh, that update. Thank you. I'm going to hand over to Ms. Pascal Alix Laborde, who's a regional counselor for the environment and the uh, Saint Martin local authority. Local authority. Yes, there was a word missing there in French. Thank you. You have the floor, madam. Good evening. I would like to express uh, my gratitude for having been invited here to report on the situation at the Saint-Martin local authority. It's a French island and a Dutch island at the same time, uh, located in the northern uh, West Indies. It's a sliver of territory and uh, faces critical challenges when it comes to its development. Yet, we have got some strong suits. We have been able to make the best of our strengths and uh, have a great deal left to explore among our resources. We have got a unique maritime position and uh, enjoy a similar situation to many other islands in the world. As an island region, our inhabitants uh, face challenges, but also enjoy tremendous advantages, particularly when it comes to the European Union's uh, policies. Samata is the smallest of the ultramarine islands, although it is over a thousand square kilometers in size. The maritime policy and the blue economy are critical for the future of our territory and will be a source of sustainable growth, economic diversification, and job creation in key sectors such as renewable marine energies, the development of naval architecture and ports, and sustainable growth, fishing, and aquaculture, among others. As we are in our own oceanic basin, our situation in the Caribbean means that we uh, have an active role to play when it comes to cooperation policies with uh, the neighboring third-party countries when it comes to oceanic policies. The European Union has undertaken a study. For example, there was one conducted in 2017 for sustainable blue growth, and the European Parliament made a resolution on September 14, 2021, devoted to a new approach to the maritime strategy for the Atlantic region. Well, these initiatives show that uh, Europe does uh, have an interest in uh, our region achieving sustainable blue growth, and uh, specific instruments will have to be devised to correspond to our unique situation, and sufficient funding will have to be provided. The Saint-Martin Local Authority has undertaken 
to define as part of our regional and territorial strategy for a blue economy. We've defined our priorities as a concerted effort with all of the local stakeholders. We operate in a social and economic context that is thrown into complete upheaval by the health crisis and Irma, the Irma hurricane, our strategy should allow us to identify our needs, means of action, and the necessary uh, responses that will help us drive benefits from the blue economy in a sustainable and resilient fashion. Now, drawing up this strategy will require three steps. For one thing, we need to undertake a territorial assessment. We need to draft a strategic document. And we need to support the local players in implementing the strategy. And then we need to carry out an annual monitoring process. Yet, in spite of uh, the uh, recent nature of this process, we've already obtained uh, pledges of funding. The renovation and the transformation of the maritime port to, for, uh, with a view to transforming it to a multimodal scheme has been possible through FADER funding, through ERDF funding, pardon me, and we've undertaken to train uh, ship repairmen. We've worked to assist uh, people who uh, trade in uh, seafood equip themselves. And we have, thanks to the Interreg Caribbean, we've been able to undertake steps to support those who uh, require navigational aids. And at the common contribution of November 2021, further progress was made. It is critical that the European Commission should uh, draft legislation that is better suited to our local requirements and uh, more consistent and give us better visibility regarding those financial tools that are available but that are very scattered at the moment. We need to mobilize existing funding to support our initiatives and projects, notably as part of our regional strategies for a blue economy. Article 349 of the Treaty on the Operation of the European Union, the Commission must um, ensure that the funding provided uh, matches its ambitions and our region's ambitions. This year, we uh, eagerly await a solution to these various issues. Thank you very kindly, Madam. And to describe your strategy as well, it was very interesting. I'm going to hand over now to my neighbor, who's very patient and who was going to be presenting a PowerPoint, but uh, is going to be describing rapidly the content of thereof. You're the Vice President of the Guadeloupe Region. The floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you for receiving me. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I think we can keep things simple. I represent Guadeloupe. I'm vice chair of the regional council in charge of the commission for blue growth of the economy of blue. The Guadeloupe is committed to the blue economy. Since 2021, we've created and detached um, management of uh, blue economy from uh, a green economy. And since 2021, we have a, a, a committee that I preside, and which take, takes care of the blue economy and the blue growth. I'm happy to have me the Cécile Duflo, who is just uh, next down here, who takes care of the environment and the Environment Commission of the region, but who also we have the pleasure of having created the first regional agency for biodiversity that she presides over. So the French Office of Biodiversity is an ultra mean. So, so we are uh, indeed very proud of that. To say that Guadeloupe is committed, we are committed in terms of the blue economy and also in biodiversity because we participate fully. I'm not going to go over everything that was said about Polynesia and Reunion Island, um, but the importance of the overseas uh, uh, areas in the blue economy 
and the uh, radiation of France in Europe uh, an extension. So you facilitated in fact, my speech by what you said because I fully participate in what you have said, notably in taking in the taking into consideration of traditional fishing and uh, and boats of less than 12 meters. This is uh, we have to be consistent and today. We have to work on what's going to impact the least our ecosystem. We, we can't compare a, 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 ship, a boat of less than 12 meters that weighs things by kilograms or a huge shipping boat, a fishing boat, which counts by ton. So we use the same as you do, We're using the FEDER and FSE. But we need to take into consideration uh, and what Polynesia talked about. We're very empirical in our approach uh, to manage our biodiversity, our ecosystem, and we're doing that by impacting much less this eco ecosystem. Obviously, there's room to, for improvement, and we've decided to commit to that improvement, as you have indeed as well, with that real will to have marine protected areas in Guadeloupe, we share that with Martinique, and we have a uh, we also have a coastline where fishing is prohibited, um, and there's a real problem there, which requires that we rethink and help our uh, fisher fishermen because they need uh, an aid adapted to their activities. We need, and we have decided to work on aquaculture as a strategic area that we want to base on because we know that aquaculture can make it possible for us to reduce our impact on the ecosystem. But here again, and I'm calling upon the state so that it will be more effective and more consistent. We can't, uh, uh, we, are, we are running a project, but these are very structuring, but we cannot have deadlines uh, that are one, two, three years. This, these are not possible in terms of a time scale. I'd like to insist as well on the the necessity, really, in our territory is to move, to make more efforts in research by accompanying Ephraimer in a better way. For the knowledge of species, uh, we know very well that we live from tourism in, the, in, in that part of the economy and tourism does benefit from that in this type of territory, but it's more than sugarcane and banana uh, united. So it uh, shows how important that is. But we need to know much better the species. And today, to help the business evolve, and, and fishing it helps a, a research advance to see where we can, what we can actually count on. So if you better know the research, it's, it makes it easier to manage it, to pilot it with a means of control that must be um, adequate in order to be more effective and to have a closer um, and more sustainable management of our blue economy. Um, um, I think it was quite similar to what you've heard over these three days. In any case, thank you for receiving us and thank you above all for what you're going to do afterwards and the having listened to our traditional fishermen who need to uh, evolve and participate fully in uh, the, the, uh, the extension of France and Europe. Thank you, Mr. Collage, for responding to some of what has been said by the panel. It was very clear. Thank you indeed very much to have been brief and sorry so much that it was a bit compressed. And you, I'm glad you had uh, uh, a good presentation. I'd like to hand over to my last speaker, Stefan Bijou, for the uh, last word. He's a member of the European Parliament. What does that inspire you, all of these interventions? What can you, how can you respond, sir, in just two words, because obviously we're already a bit late. Good evening, Madam President, Mr. Minister, Mr. President, General Secretary. I can say that our discussion ultimately was a demonstration of the strength and the diversity of our regions. I could also say that ultimately we are all t those together bound by that necessity to 
to meet the challenge to save the ocean. I could also tell you all of those things, but at this time, I'm going to respond to your question to, to query uh, collectively, all of us together, about what will remain ultimately of these exchanges and these discussions tomorrow and the day after. I think that a part of the responses have to do with the fact that all of us can be ambassadors, but also the builders of solutions for all of our territories. And just one look at the world map, and we can understand that despite the geographical distance, and, and the minister Imaram uh, said this so well, what brings us together are the oceans and the ocean more globally. We have a shared destiny, and that's maybe the strongest message what comes out of the time that we've shared uh, here today in the summit. And, and as a European deputy, a part of my responsibility lies in working such that Europe is a committed player for the ocean and be recognized as a worldwide uh, property of humanity. And as an insular, because I come from a small island and and my approach as a citizen and my political commitment is to contribute to the, this alarm that is now ringing very loud in the ears of the European institutions so that message be heard in our overseas territories and in our regions, our maritime regions, that are in the front lines of the climate uh, problems. And I'm not going to go over that again. So. And it should be adequate with respect to all the dangers we're and hazards we're encountering. So we need a, a, a winning partnership to do that. That's what needs to be set up. And this also requires, it's, there is a necessity for a solid confidence and trust among between us, between our regions and our European institutions. But trust cannot be just by decree. It's something that is built and that is built with proofs of confidence. And that's why we need uh, working all together uh, the same as you. I, I have claims. Um, I want our territories and our regions to be solutions to build that blue economy that we so very much need. And to find a solution, you know, we're going to need money to do that. Yes, indeed. Will we have the money? Yes, with Europe. With Europe, who made the courageous political choice to think the 30% of their investments for the recovery. It's both political and to bet on that transition that we need to make. What does that mean? It means that today we have the means of our ambitions, and those ambitions need to be placed at the service of daring. And at the same time, we need to preserve the fundamentals and defend our specific uh, aspects. And at the same time, we have to play the card of daring and innovation because our youth wants that, because our youth needs a horizon. And to conclude, I'd like to say, just as your case, I defend the fact that thanks to your, we can be the bridge between ecology and economy, and notably the blue economy, because indeed we are legitimate to carry and succeed in this uh, great work. And I'd like to say that this ocean, which is really the bond between us and the land, and this bond between people in the Pacific for, uh, that's been that way forever, the older people are handing over a message that says one single ocean, one single people, and that is the Pacific. It's that ability to say that this, uh, this bond is a strength, despite the fragility of our territories and the distance that sometimes is a handicap, we can win the challenge that is confronting us today. And I would say that it, as we're going to be uh, leaving now, contrary to Las Vegas, everything that goes up in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. I'd like to say that what has been decided here in Brest We've understood this in our hearts. We are really at the beginning of an acceleration that is necessary both to become aware and also to have the will to do and to succeed. We need to be pragmatic, but pragmatism 
doesn't stop optimism. We need to be optimistic, and I'd like to stop and each of us bring home that optimism to each of our regions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bijou. I think that you you gave us a, a very inspiring speech about the, what is to follow, and that's what important, as you said. I would like to invite uh, my president, uh, Kay Sloven, to come on stage to conclude the whole event. I'd like to thank the panelists, first of all. I think we can applaud them, give a round of applause, I think, for all of our panelists who came from uh, very far away. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. President, you have the floor. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, before rounding up this meeting, I like to thank again our distinguished speaker for participation in this event, and especially the, the speakers from our outer outermost region, because we don't hear them every meeting. So I was very impressed by the words you said uh, from the French Polynesian speaker, also the Guadeloupe and, and La Réunion and St. Maarten. I think it, it was really from the heart, and I think we can do our best with, with uh, what they told us. This forum allowed us to focus on the challenges affecting the ocean, seas, coastal regions, and their citizens. And I wish to reassure you, reassure you that the CPMR will make good use of all the insight that recomm and the recommendations that you share today. And I hope the Commissioner and the members of the European Parliament will do the same. And I have good confidence in that because the Commissioner pointed out the great importance of a multi-level governance, the inbring of the local and regional authorities. And I think it's a good time to start the debate with the European Parliament and with the European Commission about how we vision that, how we shape this new multi-level governance, because it is necessary. Um, like many speakers said, we live in extraordinary times, and yes, we do, but we also live in times to act, to act now. It's time to choose and to really choose, make a choice and choices always hurt, but it's unavoidable and it is necessary. And we need to cut and plow for growth and prosperity. And we have to realize that. And that comes not without cost, it will cost. And the last speaker pointed out, but we have some good points at the horizon. We live in an age of growing awareness. We live in an age of growing support. Um, but we, what we now need is focus on policy. Um, so we have to conclude today that we make big steps towards a better world and a better ocean, but we are not there yet. We need to continue. Um, and that is what I think what we have, have shared here today, not only the sense of urgency for acting now, but also our combined love for the ocean. Because we must not forget, the ocean was the cradle of life. And we have the responsibility to manage and to cherish and to protect this cradle of life. I wish you all a very good trip back to the places where you come from and share this message uh, with, with us. Thank you very much and have a safe journey home.